reinstalled the internet on our computer just a short time ago, and I haven't been able to get the kids off it ever since. Who remembers a simpler time before the dab and the mannequin challenge? Because I sure do. Now, instead of respecting your right to live, you have to complete crazy challenges just to be cool. What happened to light up sneakers? But wait, fidget spinners aren't just spinning toys to help you stop fidgeting. They can't be dangerous. Ah, uh, my sweet, naive little fool, here are 10 times fidget spinners got kids in trouble. Hey guys, we are very excited to announce the Premium Network. The Premium gets you early access to videos from The Richest, Screen Rant, The Taco, The Sportster, The Things, and many other great channels. Literally thousands of videos in one place with ad-free browsing. Check out the Premium by clicking this link. Sign up for free and start binge-watching videos from your favorite channels. Wait, before we begin, remember to hit that subscribe button to get more awesome content just like this. We know you wanna. Too cool for school. Fidget spinners were originally designed to help children with special needs such as autism and children with ADHD to focus in class. They were branded as learning aids. And this is true, people do attest to the fact that they work on children with these conditions. If your child's main argument is that they need a fidget spinner in class to help them focus, but they don't have a learning disability, they don't need one in class. Because of the major influx of children bringing their new favorite toy to class, the original purpose seems to be lost in translation. Teachers cannot get the kids in their classes to focus and have had to resort to banning them from school. This has resulted in blanket bans with many special needs children losing out on something that was actually helping them. The other children try out tricks, try and imitate their favorite YouTubers, more on that later, all while in class. It is understandable that teachers would be upset, but maybe parents should be a little stricter about taking toys to school. If they complain about other kids taking them to school, you could use it as a chance to teach your child a lesson in sensitivity and those with special needs. If that fails you, you could always use the because I said so or my house, my rules cards. Worked for my parents. All choked up. Kelly Rose Joniak, a mom from Houston, Texas, and her daughter, Britton, were driving home from a fun swim meet one afternoon when Kelly Rose heard a strange sound behind her. In her rearview mirror, she saw her daughter quickly turning red and it appeared as though she were choking. The concerned mother tried to do the Heimlich maneuver, but it didn't work. She rushed Britton to the hospital where emergency surgery had to be performed to remove a metal bushing from the fidget spinner out of her esophagus. Britton had wanted to clean the bushing and had taken it out and put it in her mouth, resulting in the choking. This is unfortunately not the first incident involving choking, and quite a few children have undergone emergency procedures due to them choking on fidget spinner parts. Authorities are warning parents not to give them to younger children at all or to keep a constant eye on them. Anyone who is a parent will know that it is impossible to watch your child every second and that it is possible for something to happen in the split second that you turn around. So here's an idea. Don't buy your child who is under 12 a fidget spinner. I mean, come on people, it says so right on the packet. The Missouri Incident Okay, so we can understand how swallowing a fidget spinner part is a pretty standard complaint about most toys, but how about this one? Getting your finger caught in one of the bearings. This was the reality that a Missouri-based mommy found herself facing one day. Her son was playing peacefully with his fidget spinner after being told very carefully not to put it in his mouth. When suddenly, mommy, I can't get it off. Her son, Charlie, had gotten his finger stuck in one of the bearings. They tried to get the bearing off, but the more that they struggled, the more it bent and cut into his finger. Eventually, they admitted defeat and went straight to the emergency room. Problem solved, right? Wrong. It took two or three different tools to cut the tool off of little Charlie's finger. Joan Lawrence, who leads the regulatory affairs for the Toy Association that represents the toy, urged parents not to give the toy to small children and to always buy the toys from a reputable toy store or brand. I mean, she's, she's not wrong. You need to read the age recommendation on the packaging or else there are going to be repercussions. Let that be a lesson to all parents. Your child does not need a fidget spinner if they're less than 12 or do not have a learning disability. Buy them a Barbie doll or something or, I don't know, Minecraft. Caught in the act. Some parents listen to the rules or don't give in to the pressure of buying their kids the latest fads and trust their children will be fine without the latest must-have gadget. Of course, they are completely right and should not be judged, but sometimes kids face enormous pressure at school and are anxious about fitting in. This is the equivalent of an unstoppable force meeting an immovable object. 
Neither party is going to give, and so the unstoppable force finds another dumber way to get what it, <clears throat> I mean, what he or she wants. In this case, the children took matters into their own hands, literally, but were caught stealing. The boys aged 11 and 12 wanted fidget spinners. Their parents said no. The boys went and stole fidget spinners, but were caught by shop assistants. The boys were held until the police were alerted. They are pretty serious about shoplifting in Mierlo, Netherlands. Allegedly, one of the boys had been caught earlier that week, but had been let off with a warning. Their parents were notified, and now the boys not only weren't cool for not having fidget spinners, but also had to make do without their cell phones, iPods, and iPads. Oh, the humanity. What are they supposed to do now? Go outside? Play with a ball? Seriously, those poor kids. The $2,000 tooth. Most parents assume that fidget spinners are harmless. I mean, everyone has them. But take it from Michelle Slate, a mom from Syracuse with a nine-year-old daughter, they are definitely not harmless. Her daughter Alexis said that they were even allowed to take them to school and if they didn't play with them in class, then the teachers were fine with it. Michelle didn't have any reason to suspect the toy was dangerous and bought her daughter the toy. This time, the issue wasn't about swallowing or getting her fingers stuck. She was playing with her fidget spinner when the toy hit her tooth. It didn't just crack, it chipped off a huge portion of the tooth. Michelle now has to shell out $2,000 for a root canal caused by a $5 toy. Harmless, you say? That toy just caused Michelle's wallet a huge injury. Oh yes, and the, the child, of course. This isn't an isolated incident, however. So-called fidget spinner tricks are causing injuries everywhere. These tricks include spinning them on various surfaces, throwing them into the air, and don't even get me started on what they glue onto fidget spinners these days. They spin out of control and hit children, causing bruising and other injuries. Don't believe us? Well, consider our next entry. Blind Spot Australian native Isaac, an 11-year-old from Shepparton, had recently gotten a fidget spinner from his parents. He got pretty good at some tricks and got popular for showing them off on the playground. One particular day, he was thrilling his classmates with some of his skillful tricks, when he threw the fidget spinner into the air but didn't manage to catch the toy. The disappointment in his friends' faces quickly turned to horror when they realized what had happened. The fidget spinner had clipped the side of his eye. It was an accident that almost could have taken out his eye, but luckily it didn't. After recovering, it turned out that Isaac didn't get away with that missed catch after all. The scarring from the injury makes it difficult to see out of the corner of his eye. He must now turn his head to see something from that angle. It seems like a heavy price to pay for a harmless trick. His parents agree and took the story to the media. They warn other parents not to dismiss the toys as harmless, as accidents do happen, and they seem to be happening a lot. But this is what happens when you take something that was supposed to be a learning toy and try and make it do tricks. It might work out great for a little while, but they weren't made for that purpose, and ultimately, there will be consequences. The TSA does not approve. Did you know that the TSA has an Instagram account? Neither did this guy. The unidentified man was just going about his normal business at the airport, but the TSA would not let him leave with his fidget spinner. Before going on, I just want to make something very clear. Fidget spinners are bright, multicolored plastic spinning toys. Anything that works like a fidget spinner, but is made out of something else, has pointy ends, or can cut you, is not a fidget spinner. That is a spinning weapon of death. If you have one, there is something wrong with you and you need to be examined by the TSA. This guy had one of these pointy death objects and was upset when it was confiscated since the rules didn't say anything against fidget spinners. The fidget spinner, which closely resembles a Japanese shuriken weapon, was then featured on the TSA's Instagram page as a warning to all. They dubbed it Satan's Fidget Spinner and clarified that they had nothing against normal fidget spinners, but these types were not allowed. Bone Crusher versus Fidget Spinner do you consider yourself a daredevil? Would you say that you live on the wild side of life or that you do stupid things for apparently no reason? Mama would be so proud. No matter how much of a daredevil you proclaim to be, you probably could not beat this guy. A wild Florida employee decided to show off his made alligator training skills and fidget spinner skills in one go, so he spun his fidget spinner on top of an alligator's snout. And just to be clear, the alligator's name is Bone Crusher, and he weighs about 1,000 pounds. So that seemed like the best idea ever. To his credit, Bone Crusher didn't live up to his name and seemed kind of bored while the spinner was living up to its name. Maybe he's just used to the daredevil guy's antics. 
in which case it might be a good idea to fire Mr. Daredevil before Bone Crusher gets fed up. You know, on Daredevil guys' hands. Or legs. Poor Bone Crusher. Maybe he doesn't even crush bones. Maybe he just wants to settle down and have a family. Instead, he gets featured in fidget spinner videos, and that's about the quickest way to get ignored by women. Speaking of getting ignored by women, here is our next entry. Why we can't have nice things. First of all, I'd just like to say that I like YouTubers. They make me laugh, and they're always good for a controversial scandal that makes me feel like I'm less of an emotional wreck. But then, there are some who are the reason why we can't have nice things. Not that I wanted a fidget spinner, but anyway. A new trend has emerged where some YouTubers have taken to gluing sharp objects to fidget spinners, like razor blades and such. Then, they make these fidget spinners spin crazy fast and stop them with, you guessed it, various body parts. The problem with this is that they are encouraging other kids to do it, and things could go so terribly wrong. For example, one of those razor blades could come loose, or they could lose control of that wildly spinning death toy. They would then post the results from the grave. I'm not sure why this is a big problem, and I don't want to say thinning the herd. Eh, moving on, moving on. Assault charges. We live in a messed up world. We live in the type of world where having the latest toy means the difference between having friends or being shunned on the playground. What kind of pressure is that? Kids have to be kids, but instead they're engaging in a form of socioeconomic hierarchy that they won't learn about until they're in high school, where things get even worse. Am I overreacting? Do, do you think I'm overreacting? Oh, okay, okay, just, just take a look at this. An 11-year-old child stabbed a 7-year-old girl in the park in Syracuse, New York, over a fidget spinner. And I don't mean lightly stabbed with a stick because they were playing pirates or something. I mean brutally knifed, requiring three dozen stitches to fix her leg type of stab. The 11-year-old was then charged with second-degree assault and fourth-degree possession of a weapon. It is not clear who started the fight and why, but it was definitely about the fidget spinner. Still think I'm overreacting? Although this is not about the fidget spinner, and more about our fractured society, it's still scary that a $5 toy was the cause of such a horrific incident. Well, if you're not worried about fidget spinners after this video, I don't know what to tell you. If you're interested in more exciting videos and content, please subscribe to The Wacky and check out our playlist. We're always uploading new content that's sure to make your day a little more wacky.